Container gardening is a brilliant solution for apartment dwellers like myself. I make sure to have at least one plant in each well-lit area of my home. There are some awesome advantages to container gardening as well. For one, you can arguably grow a wider variety of plants because it's easier to adjust the soil types and environmental factors, especially when your potted plants are mobile and flexible to work with. Not only can you use your potted plants as conversation pieces and home decor, they also help to clean the air in your home. It's just an overall great idea to start your own container garden. And what a better time to do it than now when everyone is already home anyway. First, let's talk about the basics of choosing the right container for your plants. Think of the container as the home for your plants. Size, drainage, and even materials matter. Don't worry, most plants do fine with an average terracotta pot, but it's best to research what type of home your plant likes the most. I got these adorable ceramic pots on Amazon, which came with its own little mesh sheet on the inside. The mesh keeps the soil and roots from protruding out of the pot as the plant grows. When it comes time to water, all you have to do is let them soak in an inch of water for 15 minutes and they'll drink as much as they need to. A container this small would best fit succulents and cacti since they tend to be the most low maintenance and forgiving plants. I can honestly go weeks without watering my desert plants and they fare just fine. The only time when I've killed a desert plant was when I loved it too much and overwatered it. So there you go. Just gently loosen up the roots of the plant and plop it into your container. Desert plants generally like well-draining soil, so you should use a container that has a drainage hole like the one I'm using. If not, I have other creative solutions that I'll share in a bit. Look at how cute this set turned out. I named them the Don't Mess With Me Gang. If there's dirt on your potted plants, just use an old brush to brush it off. Easy as that. Now let's work with containers that don't have drainage holes. Like I said, most desert plants prefer well-draining soil but there are always exceptions. I've experimented with dozens of desert plants and I've found some types that are especially resilient. I mean, I couldn't kill these plants even if I tried to. So if you have a desert plant that you know doesn't need much watering, attention, 
or really anything, then it might be fine to plop them into a container without drainage and just leave them alone. I wouldn't recommend it with a new plant that you're unfamiliar with though. Next, I chose two medium-sized planters without drainage for my poppies. Flowering plants are generally more finicky than cacti or succulents, so I wouldn't risk putting these straight into my no-drainage planters. Instead, I'm just gonna cut off the rim of the poppy containers so the whole thing can fit inside my planters. To water, all I have to do is take them out of the planters and water them like usual. You can use this same strategy for larger plants as well. Just keep it in its original container and place the whole thing into a nice planter without drainage holes. For these last two plants, I'm just gonna pot them normally because these planters come with drainage holes and their own saucers. One thing to remember when it comes to container gardening is that you should always start small. It can get pretty overwhelming to tend to a ton of different plants with different needs. So start with an amount that is easy and enjoyable to manage. Next, let's talk about soil. Good soil is the foundation of a healthy garden. If your container is the plant's home, then your soil is like the household environment. Different plants need entirely different types of soil to thrive, just like how one family might be completely different from the next. Your plant needs to feel like it fits perfectly at home so it can relax and focus on growing rather than get stressed out by the wrong type of environment. Here, I have a combination of coconut husk, compost, and fertilizer. All will be linked in my description below. Over on this end, I have a mixture of potting soil, homemade compost, and fertilizer. A mixture this rich in nutrients is perfect for vegetable plants like cauliflower, which are heavy feeders.
Finally, let's talk about picking the right spots for your potted plants. Putting a perfectly potted plant with well-adjusted soil in the wrong spot of your house can still harm or even kill the plant. Selecting the environment is extremely important in your plant's ability to grow healthily. You're not going to get it right every time, so don't be too hard on yourself. Just experiment little by little and have fun. To get more detailed insights on how to take care of your brand new garden, I recommend watching the Happy House Plants class on Skillshare by Chris Satch. I learned so much just by watching his course alone, but Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes and all sorts of creative topics. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in creativity. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can just follow wherever your creativity takes you. No matter what 2021 brings, you can spend time creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes. The first 1,000 people to click on the link in my description will get a free trial of premium membership. After the trial ends, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this gardening video. I hope you were inspired to create your own joyful and peaceful life, whether through gardening or otherwise. I'll see you guys next time.